about uh, 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 what if in the morning we had a message about uh, from Pastor Didier uh, from um, House of Mercy who shared with us about uh, the kingdom, uh, the, what do you call it, that in, the pre, in the midst of pressure. In the midst of pressure, we need to continue to serve God. Amen? We need to continue to be fervent with the things of God. Amen? And, and, and I want us to understand that uh, as we uh, uh, people come to, to uh, encourage us, we must understand that the messages that are brought are, are timely with what God is doing in this city and doing with us. He said, we should maintain our peace under pressure. And, and as we know that in this time, of the, this time that we are in, the world is in turmoil. The world is in, 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 in so many things are happening. Everybody is under pressure. Uh, but in the midst of the pressure of what we are going, pressure of coronavirus, pressure of uncertainty, pressure of economic uh, uh, situations and health situations all around the world, we must maintain our peace. Because Jesus said, my peace, I live with you. Not as the world gives. The, the world's peace is limited. But God's peace is unlimited. Amen. Hallelujah. And then Apostle Sapio also brought us in the afternoon service. He came and speak, uh, spoke about revelational knowledge. Revelational knowledge. Revelational knowledge is that I believe that the church lack revelational knowledge. Knowledge. That's what we are in the state that we are in. Uh, many Christians lack revelational knowledge. Revelation, you see, you can have theoretical knowledge. You can read the Bible and acquire knowledge. You know the word but it doesn't do anything to your life. It doesn't affect your life. You don't, you don't know how to... Uh, I mean, you, you, it, it, that word is not changing your life. It's not changing your character. It's not changing our way of living, our way of doing things, whether even, including even at workplace. It doesn't change our character at work. Our character at work, how they know us and, and, and how they know us in church are two different ways. But when you, ha you, are, you are a person who... Is a loving, even at church, you are loving out there, you are loving. At church, you are caring out there, you are caring. At church, you are respectable out there, you are respectful. You don't, you, you don't act respectfully in church, and out there, we are swearing and cursing and acting as uh, the son of Satan or a daughter of Satan. Amen? So, revelational knowledge gives, it, gives us ability to take the word of God and apply it to our lives and in a way that it affects a change in our homes, affects a change in our lives. And so that was a wonderful messages that were brought to us. And I'm going to continue from two weeks ago, uh, the message of sharing uh, about giving. Uh, giving. Say giving. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, um, today I'm going to just uh, uh, talk about the giving in that aspect of where three things that I spoke about last time the first one was actually two things. But today is the third one from uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses uh, 1 to 4. That's where all the messages, stream points or message came from. And, and the first one that I started with was that uh, giving requires reasoning. God expects you to reason. In your giving, it must be reasonable. You must reason to give. You don't just give out of, without, outside of your thought. You have to think about why you are giving. You have to think about the reason why you are giving. You have to have a reason why to give to the church. You have to have a reason why to give to somebody. You have to have a reason why, whether you are giving your life to serve, you are giving money to the church to, do, to serve, you are doing both, or you're giving yourself as a worship leader to, to dedicate your life, or an usher, or a preacher, or a teacher, whatever we do, or a media department to aid the church, you have to, you are, they, there is a reason behind it. And you don't just do it without thinking. So there is, we must, there is a reason for giving. And then the second one that I, I, I preached two weeks ago was that we, there is a right way of giving. We can give wrongly. You can give yourself wrongly to somebody or to a ministry or to an organization. Uh, uh, and to uh, uh, even talking about we give ourselves to our employers. Right? And when we give ourselves to them, our time, we sacrifice our time from our family and take ourselves and give it to our employer uh, to use us to do something, whether it's a skill work or non-skill work. And, and the, at the end, 
they give us what? They give us uh, uh, something. They give us, I I had peanuts. (laughs) They give us pay or peanuts. And the pay is peanuts, right? But they make us think it's like something. So which means, you see, do you know that pay is a reward? So today I'm going to speak about when we give ourselves or give uh, our money to the church, there is a reward. Just like when we give our physical bodies, our physical beings to our, our employers, and we give our time to our employers, we take it from our family, wife, and children, and give it to our employer for eight hours, or 12 hours, or six hours, or four hours. They reward you for those hours, right? And, 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 and if human beings who in our nature are corrupt, in our nature are sinful, in our nature are greedy and selfish, are able to reward people for when they work for us, how much more God? I mean, you just think about it for a second. If God is truly God, uh, not, uh, not, and we know that God is God, we know that He's true, we know that He exists. We, it's not just a thing or something, an imaginary thing. It's not a, he's not like a folk story. He's real. And if we believe that and we are working for him or giving our money to serve him or giving ourselves to serve him, we must expect a reward. But don't go there because of the reward. Go and serve just, uh, uh, I mean, with all your heart. Give with all your heart and definitely he will reward you because he said it in uh, Matthew chapter 6 verse 1 and 4. And let's open our Bibles there and look at it together. To remind ourselves of the scriptures. Because um, the message by which um, we are uh, preaching or we are sharing is from the scriptures themselves. Take heed that ye do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. So which means, he's saying that take we talk about the how, the right way of giving life the, the two weeks ago. And, and when we do things right, there is, which this scripture is letting us know that there will be a reward. There is a reward. God has put into giving a reward. God has worked into the principle of giving a reward. And when we operate accordingly with reason, with, in the right way, with that understanding, we should also expect a reward. But don't let the reward be the motivating factor in giving. But sometimes when we are preaching or talking the church, I'm talking about us, in, including the restorer, we don't do that much. And if we do, we need to change because that's what the message is being preached. We, so we, we don't, usually we are emphasizing on the reward and the reward. Give and you'll get this. Give and, and we forget that we just have to give to be obedient to God. Not even if God doesn't reward us, we should still give. But we know that God says that there will be a reward. Amen? Therefore, when thou doest thy arms, do not sound a trumpet before, uh, before, what? before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. The glory of the man means they will get the reward of men. Men will reward them. Men may choose to do business with them. We choose to like them. May say good things about them. They've got their reward. They've got their glory. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. You see, that is the reward. Even in the natural, when you, when you sound the, the trumpet, you beat, I mean, beat the drums, let everybody know what you are doing and what you have given and to the church or to a person or to a family or to an organization, I give them this, I did this. You've got your reward. Verse 3. But when thou doest arms, which means when you give, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thy arms may be in secret, and my Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee. This is Jesus speaking. His father who is in secret. When we give in secret, he sees what we give. Only God knows, should know what you give. Only God should see what you give. 
but nobody else is supposed to know. Not your wife, not your husband. Maybe your wife may see the, uh, that tide came, went to the restored house it, uh, 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 from your checking account or savings account. Okay, that's fine because you two are one. But at least it should not be something that is sort of like uh, influenced by one or the other. But you should give willingly like the last time I spoke about the right way of giving. Now, there are three things out of this that I see that I want to share with you from the verse 4. And the verse 4, it talks, Jesus says that there will be a reward. Say reward. Say it one more time. Say it another time. And then tell God, I, respect, I, I expect you to fulfill your word and reward me. Don't be, don't be shy. Be bold. Speak. According to your word, I will be a giver. According to your word, I will see your reward. I will experience your reward in this lifetime and the life to come. Amen. Now, what do I see? See, for you to see, when it comes to money, uh, when it comes to material things, money, for you and I to, to, um, to, uh, uh, to get a reward from money, there's only at least, I think there's one thing that I know of. Maybe you may know more than one, but I know of one thing. If you have money, I have money. The only way that money can bring a reward to me is that I must reinvest that money to bring a reward. If you, take, if you have money and you put it in the bank, in your checking account, you are losing that money. You are not making money. Is that true or yes? Because they have, you are paying every month they take a service fee. Your money is more than, it's, it's a lot, maybe 10000 maybe 100000 They are taking every month $30. It depends on how you use your account. So you are losing money. And they will give you probably three cents in a month. They, give, they take $30, they give you three cents for your 10000 So are you making money? Are you getting any reward from it? No, it's just, you may, no, it may feel good that I have 10000 or 100000 but you are losing money. That is not uh, an investment. If you want to make money on that, that 100000 or 10000 you have to take that money and release it to an investment. Is that true or yes? Maybe term deposit. Even term deposit, now they don't even give you up to one per, more than 1%, one percent, a fraction, not 1%. So you are not making So if you want more money, you have to look at investment that gives more return and then take that money and release it to the investors who will give you their portfolio and for you to study and make sure if it makes sense or not. But even that is not a guarantee that you may get that money. If you put it in bond, it is, it, it, it's a guarantee that the bonds are with the government. But we know that there are countries around the world where you invest in the bonds when the country is going bankrupt, you don't get the money. So there is a degree of faith that you put into investment, even with all calculations that we do. So investment, I want us to go into Ecclesiastes chapter, chapter 11. And we're going to look at, I want to read, I want us to read verses, um, verses 1 through 6. Ecclesiastes. There's some interesting perspective in Ecclesiastes chapter, chapter 11. Hallelujah. I have it projected already. Chapter 11, verse 1 to 6. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven, and also to eight, 
For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or to, toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. He that regarded the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with a, a child, even so thou knowest not the way of God who make it all. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thy hand. For thou knowest not whether or where shall, uh, which shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. This scripture is talking about three things. I want to go back to verse 1. When you go to verse 1, verse 1 states, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it in, uh, so uh, find it after many days. And it, what does cast mean? There are five things in this verse, the best one. Cast. For you, when the, somebody say cast, or when the word says cast, uh, what does cast mean? Cast means that what? To direct. Cast means to let, let loose. Cast means to give over. So when the Bible says, cast thy bread, it means that to let loose your bread. And we will find out what the bread also means. Let's let loose, release the bread. For you and I to understand bread, bread represents seed. Bread represents grain. Out of grain and seed are basically the same thing. The grain of uh, 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 corn. The grain of uh, peanuts or the grain of uh, apple. When you don't take that, you don't release that onto the ground or give it over to the ground or let it loose onto the ground, is it going to germinate? Church, I want you to, I mean, literally, you have to. Spiritual things are, are the, the, see, physical things are parallel to spiritual things. There is some truth about physical things or natural things that have a parallel to spiritual things. And that's why Jesus always used the parables to speak and use trees and use uh, uh, lambs and goats and to explain certain principles of, uh, of the Bible. God is saying that you and I should release a seed. Direct your seed. Direct your money. Release your money. Direct your money. Uh, give over your money. So when you, we come during offering and tie time and into the basket in the front to release it or online to, to release it from your, uh, your, your bank or your credit card and, and to say, I'm giving it to God, you are, it's like you are letting loose that money. It's like you are giving over that money to the church, for the, to the church, for the church so that the church can do what God is called the church to do. You understand? So that, when the Bible says cast, the word cast, that's what it means. Secondly, as I already explained, bread means grain. It means what? Uh, seed. And it also means food. Because out of seed, we get food. Out of grain, we get food. Right? So I want, I want to explain this and then come back and then look at the scripture. Then we'll understand what the scripture is trying to tell us uh, to do. Waters. Cast that bread upon the waters. What does the waters, uh, water represent? Water represents two things. Water represents what? Transitory things. I think a couple of years ago I preached on that. I mentioned uh, when we were the other side. Water is transitory. So if God is asking you to let loose or give over or direct your money uh, or what? Uh, upon the waters. Which means when you, re you are now release money into the house of God, we are casting it upon the waters. And what? Because the Spirit of God is in the house of God, it makes, it is like a water where water moves. Right? Any water that is stagnant, 
there's no life in it. But a, a, a stream of water that flows, oh, constantly that water is always fresh and less. Always you see that there is life, which means even under the water, you see life coming out. We may not see with our eyes, but it depends on, but there are, there. in the ocean, there is life under the ocean. Other than fish, there are life plants that are there. They call it seaweed and all that kind of stuff. There's life there. We cannot see it, but it is there. So the same thing when we release our money to God, we release our money to the church. The church is the water where they say, cast your bread upon the waters. Because one, second thing about water, other than transitory, it, it is also refreshing. Amen? Water refreshes us. That's why sometimes when we are, we, we are stressed and so we go to the ocean and just walk around it and hear waterfalls. That's why they create waterfalls. If you don't go to the ocean or a, a creek or where the water is flowing, you hear the sound. It refreshes you just by hearing, even not touching it. And then when you touch it, it's even refreshing. That's why we bathe with water to refresh us. So water is transitory and, and also refreshing. So when you release your money to the, to the church, to the house of God, basically, what it is, the Spirit of God moves because the Spirit of God is not stagnant. Amen? The Word of God moves. It is not stagnant. And therefore, when you look at many things we are enjoying in the world, and before airplanes, were, there are three th ways you can move into a, a place. Same thing with moving into the realm or in the realm of the Spirit. There are more than three, but I'll mention three. Right? Physically, you, for you to leave where we left and came here, we had to either go by air, so there is, you can either... Air is also transitory. Water is transitory. And land is also transitory. Now, one, you, we, when we were coming here, we flew. Right? How did the plane take off? Is the air that causes the plane with the mechanics and electronics that they created in the plane. But the plane can't take off without natural air. It uses the natural air to go again and, and design the uh, me mechanics uh, Aerodynamics, they use they, to clay, create the flaps on the wings to open a certain way, allow air, the air to push it up and to sustain in the air, and then force of mechanics move the plane to get here. So you can either things of transitory nature of tra uh, this, and we know that air is the spirit. Actually, when you look at the meaning of spirit, it is air, it's breath. Amen. So when God says, "Release your money, give your money." To the, to, uh, to the waters, to the church in that setting, is, which means your money is not going to be stagnant. You understand? Your money that you release, you have released to the church, is not going to be stagnant. It's going to, in the realm of the Spirit, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be refreshed and it's going to move ministry forward. It's going to move the things of God forward. And as if you have sown into move God's, God's work forward, Guess what? That move would affect your life. Other than affecting people's life for their, for their lives to be changed and transformed and be encouraged and, and heal people, uh, bring people out of darkness. Into, I mean, spiritually, if you are moving God's work forward, do you think God is so wicked that he will move your life forward? Which means your life will become transitory. You see yourself that the Bible says we will begin to grow from strength to strength, from glory to glory. You see economically you will be doing well because your, your money is moving the house of the things of God. God is making sure that your life is also moving forward. Are you understanding something? And your money will come to bring refreshment. And we know refreshment. Out of money we, we help people that have struggles and needs from time to time. So when we give to the poor or help the needy among us or elsewhere and they are, they are refreshed to get hope and to have hope to do something in their lives and also God will also refresh you. Which means your money will not be stale. Your econ I mean your economic well-being will not be stale. God will make sure that you are also moving forward. You are also, as you are moving forward, you are being refreshed. See, these are the these are principles that God has laid that nobody can change. Whether we believe it or not, it is what it is. But those who practice it faithfully, you see that these things are true in your life. You begin to see it manifest in your life. Amen? 
So the third one is about, he said, cast your bread upon the waters for thou will find. The word find, I want us to look at it. So this, there are five things. I've talked about two, two so far. The second one is, uh, uh, sorry, I've talked about three. The, se- the t- fourth one is find. What does it mean to find? See, the Bible says cast. The casting is not God who will not do the casting for you. The, 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 the water is God's pl- uh, platform for you to be able to move forward. And, 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 and sorry, the bread, the bread is God's word. The, what? the water is, the bread is God's word that gives, it has spoken into your life, has given you the grace to be able to, to rise up and, and go and work and have energy to work. Bread, as I said, bread is food. Really, God's word feeds you to strengthen you. Though there's physical food, there's spiritual food. The physical food we know that we have to eat to survive. Spiritually, if we don't eat, we will also not survive. We may be living, but we, are not be, we will not be alive. You understand? And it gives you energy to go to work and make an income. It gives you strength, go to a work and make an And then God said, bring a tent to him. Or over and above that, an offering. Now, when we act upon it, it say, you then will find. We will find something. And I want us to define the word find, F-I-N-D. Then we will understand them. Later on, we combine this and then look in light of what the scripture is saying, the, what the message in the scripture is saying, and hopefully it should give us uh, uh, understanding of how we can obtain reward. See, uh, you may say, I'm explaining this to know that, how we can obtain reward. Now, find. Find means get. And thou shalt thou, thou find in many days, which means you will get something in many days. Right? The next one is discover. Sorry, not discover. Yeah, get. Second one is gain. Third one is discover. And the fourth one is what? Possession. So the word, when you look at it, the biblical meaning of, uh, of find means get. So when the Bible said, cast your bread upon the waters and thou shalt find it, which means thou will get, thou will discover, thou will possess in many days. Amen? So, which means what we, sometimes what we, most of the time what we think we, we are losing, actually we are releasing it as an investment into the house of God. So when you begin to see giving in that, uh, 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 with that understanding or with that a perspective, it changes the way, I mean, one thinks about giving. Sometimes we give, when we are giving, we think we are losing. Because that's the way it feels like. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It feels like I'm losing $10. I'm losing $100. I'm losing 1000 But when we, be, we should look at it as we are investing it into the kingdom of God. And the one who is, controls the stock market of the kingdom of God will make sure that there will be dividends that will be allotted to your portfolio. Yes. Give a hand clap to God. Because if, if human beings, we know how to take pool people's money and use it to make money, and then we, yeah, we turn and give them some percentage peanuts, right? We, we give them peanuts and they make them feel good. Oh, I made 10%. But you know how much the corporation you invested your money made? They made 100%. They gave you 5%. You, oh, man, you are excited. I'm going to invest more. <laughs> I mean, it's good to invest. But the thing is that when God is a just God, he's not like a human being. God is not going to give you 10%, 5%. He's going to give you pressed down, flowing over, I mean overflowing. I mean shaking down. We make sure, you know when some of us are farm, I mean we grew up on the farm. When we are loading peanuts or or maize or rice in the sack, when you put it, we lift it up. We get two people lifted and you shake it and bound it. One is, that's what God said he would do. You shake the thing. You wanted to make sure that you, you maximize what you are, the contents in it. God said that's why he will press it down, shaking it. I mean, pressing over and overload you. And that's what the Lord said. And this is his word in Malachi chapter 3. Amen. Let us practice this word and we will definitely experience this. The last point. That I, I want to, um, I don't know where they move. Somebody moved the clock on me. So if I, don't, I go and I don't know the time, please don't forgive me. 
Um, don't worry, I'm just kidding. I will find the time. We have time. I have time on my iPad. <laughs> but I was looking for the. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Just uh, uh, you can put it. Yeah. Thank you very much. God bless you. Now, cast thy bread upon the waters, and thou shalt find it after many days. Many. Many. It's a very short verse, but it's loaded with great insight. Sometimes it, what I'm doing, I'm doing uh, what a biblical exposition or scripture exposition, which means sometimes we may read a word and just gloss and get about But when you begin to break down the words, they are very, very powerful and they are very meaningful. Then it helps us to really understand the, 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 what the message is saying. When you release a seed to the ground, you and I, Farmers are the most people that are around the world, whether they are Christians or not, they are faith. They take a seed, they release it. They take their money, they go and buy a seed from the market, whether it's corn or peanut or what have you. They have trust that the seed they bought, if they put it on the ground, it will come up. It's not a guarantee that every seed will come up. And it's not a guarantee that if the crops come out, it will, but still they have faith. And they go and put the seed down. So giving is like a farmer. Giving to the church, the church is like a farm. It's like an ocean. You are casting your bread, you are casting your seed into, into the sea. But you must uh, uh, back it with faith. Many, it says many. That shall, in many. That shall find the one in many days. I want us to look at the word many. The word many means multitude. When you look at the biblical definition of many, it means multitude. It means abundance. It means numerous. And it means greatness. That one word, this is what it means. It means what? Well, multitude, abundance, numerous, and greatness. So now when we take this scripture and put it together, this verse 1, cast thy bread upon the waters, and thou shalt find it in many days. Then let, let, let's look at it. It's basically saying that Send your money, or send your bread, or direct your bread, or let your bread loose upon the waters. Upon the upon what? Upon uh, uh, the bread. So, which means direct the grain or your money. You have the authority to direct your money. Nobody can direct it for you. No, which means nobody can go and give for you, except you send. If you if you if I send Brother Charles to to uh, for any reason, maybe I'm not here, and I say, okay, Brad Charles, take this envelope uh, or take this check when you go put it in the chest. I see, I have sent him. So he is representing me to put that money in the basket. So I've still sent it, even though physically I'm not here. You understand? So when they say cast, I have to cast it to somebody for that person to bring it if I'm not physically here. I have to cast it through the internet or through the website in order to, to get it into the church's bank account. So whether you are doing it electronically or physically, you are casting it out. And, and what you are sent out, the money is considered as bread. It's considered as grain. It's a seed. Right? That seed is being sown upon what? Upon, upon a, a, a transitory, a sent upon a tra transitory. The ministry of God is transitory. It's not stagnant. The church is a transitory ministry. It's not a stagnant. The church is a place where it brings refreshing, uh, refreshment. So when you sow into a place where there's refreshment, it refreshes the seed that you have released into it. And that seed have a connection to you. You understand? In the, thing, in the realm of the spirit, every seed you release is linked to your account in heaven. It's linked to your account on earth, which means there's a dual blessing when it comes to releasing a seed. The God has established account on your, I mean, you have a, your, your, you being a child of God and a giver, there is an account established in your heaven. That account, the, the only way you, your physical money or physical things, wealth here can make a difference in the, in, uh, 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 follow you there, is not the physical money itself, but it's what you do with it obediently according to the word of God. Because when you invest here, I say there's a reward up there for you. Amen? And you will still get a reward here. So it's a double reward. So I, I think when we get this concept and understand this concept and practice this concept, 
it is quite liberating to know that, you know what? I'm contributing to the work of the Lord. I'm contributing to the kingdom of God. God can do it without me, but yet he has invited me see, to be part of this, to be part of in, in, investing in this stock market. They are calling the kingdom stock. There are companies that are making exponential return, and they keep it among just a few people. Tycoon, rich people. Not every one of them, an uh, uh, ordinary person can invest in it. So they will invite their rich tycoons and share their ideas with them. They all invest and they're making millions. But you and I don't know them. But God has invited anyone who will. That's a privilege to give. Other. Uh, to me, that's the way I see it. It's a privilege that God will invite me and want me to bring my peanuts and add to, uh, uh, to the house of the Lord so that he can bless me. So he's setting me up and setting us up for a blessing. Amen? I want to conclude here. I cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it in many days. Send your seed. Direct your seed. Let your seed loose. Give over your money. Give over your, uh, not all your money, but a portion of your money as you see fit. 10% is the minimum. You can give over and above that. But know that it is an investment in the kingdom. And know that every investment has a return. Amen? Every investment in the world here, yeah, every investment. I mean, Sometimes you may know uh, 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 the world's investment, they may say you make 10%. Once they promise that 10%, you sign and they sign. Whether they make money or not, they will still give you that 10%. And God is not a man that he lies. Amen? So from this scripture... For you and I to be get God's reward, to get a reward from heaven. There is no other platform other than giving. When I say giving, not only money, but I'm using the money to because it's talking about seed. But you are also your life. You and I, our life is a seed. Which means it's important for you to give your life to Christ. Amen. I mean, without you releasing your life to Christ, basically you will live a physical life and die a physical death, but your spirit will not go to where it needs to go. So the first encouragement that our, our proposition that I'll propose to us here, that if we don't know the Lord, we don't have a relation with God, we should first of all give ourselves to him as a seed. And then he will take you, just like Jesus was a seed that was released onto this earth. Amen? And I say, a seed cannot germinate except it falls to the ground and rot. Then it will germinate. Amen? Which means you and I have given our lives, for those of us that have given our lives to Christ, we are a seed in God's hand. And, and, and if we are a seed, what kind of plant are you? What kind of plant are you? Are you? Have you thought about that? Are you a mango tree? Are you a pineapple? If you are from Canada, you can't be a mango tree because the, the environment here is, uh, is not conducive for mangoes. But you may be an apple, and the, the land that is, uh, the, the environment that are good for mango are not good for apple. So, which environment are you in, church? In this environment, are you a mango tree? Are you a pineapple tree? I mean, a pineapple is not a tree, it's a plant. I mean, some people tell that my pineapple is a tree, but, but it's not a tree. Uh, are you a, 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 an orange? Which kind of plant are you? And if you, you have, you, I mean, between you and God, you will know which plant you are. You are. And if you are a mango tree, are you bearing fruit? If you are an orange, are you bearing fruit? If you are a pineapple, are you bearing fruit? If you are a guava, a guava a, a tree, are you bearing fruit? And I, 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 if you are, and what, what do you call it? Uh, and a coconut tree, are you bearing fruit? You are a kiwi tree, are you bearing fruit? So God, God wants each one of us to be a seed that has fallen, died to ourselves. Amen? Which means it, on t for us to be able to give, we must first of all die to ourselves. Because the self will tell you, ah, no, 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 no. I mean, I think that the giving is, I mean, that is too much. The, the church, the pastors expect too much. 
they, I mean, the church is expecting too much. If, I mean, if it's God's church, he, God has all the money. He should just release the money. Let it, I mean, one billion come down here right now as we are seated. I'm sure that everybody will jump onto the one billion taking their share. <laughs> Amen. But God can do that. But God is not a magician. God is, doesn't use magic or use, uh, uh, he can create. You remember when they asked Jesus to pay tax? Did Jesus sweat about it? He just directed what? Peter to go to the water because the fish was holding his, his money. So God can do things like that. But he, he wants you to, to, you and I, to partner with him. If fish can release money to pay Jesus' taxes, why wouldn't you release it? Fish won't go to heaven. You will go to heaven. Why wouldn't you do it? I mean, just think about it. So I want to, to encourage us to, as we are learning and, and, and understanding, let our mind be renewed. Let our hearts be softened. Let the hardened, the things that make us difficult to practice the scriptures, the principles of the scriptures, be loosened so that we can rise up and move forward. Amen? In your economically, you move forward. And, and your a, a financial life, you move forward. Everything you do will move forward. Well, if it's education, seeking a, a profession, seeking a skill, seeking for employment, God will cause that to move forward because you are partnering with Him. Can we stand to our feet and give a shout and clap to the Lord Jesus? Give a better, that was for me. I don't think that was for God. Give a better hand clap to God. Have you gained something a little bit in this? Hallelujah. Now, in conclusion, so for us to get reward, we must invest. For us to get reward, we must also uh, be what? Our giving must be invisibly. What do I mean by that? You go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, the first, verse, uh, five, first part of verse 1 says what? Could you project the verse for me? I want to show you something. Uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse, verse, the verse 1. Chapter, sorry, chapter 6, verse 1. Take heed that ye do not your arms before men. Take heed that ye do not, you do not your arms before men, which means we must give invisibly. God is a secret God. He said give in secret. God is an invisible God. He said give invisibly. He said, um, you look at the scripture, you take ye that you do know your arm, which means don't expose what you give and how you give. Looking in the physical investment, who goes and invests when they invest, they go and announce to the world, oh, I invested stock in stocks in here. I invested, uh, I invested in, uh, 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 what do you call it? Um, uh, Microsoft. I invested in uh, uh, Facebook. I invested. Nobody does that. They invest secretly. They make the gains. They may, if they are maybe sharing the ideas or how they make, they may bring that. But they don't go announcing. They don't go and put on the radio, I invested in here. I invested in that. Nobody does that. But, so which means, when you look at the physical investment, the spiritual investment is the same. When you invest, you don't go and, 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 and tell people about it. Because when you tell people about it, you get your reward. That's what the Bible says. But when you do it in secret and invisibly, which means the secret means it's invisible. Only the invisible God sees the invisible given and then he causes it to become a transient. Or transitory. And then the last point of us getting reward, invest brings reward, giving invisibly give, brings a reward, and then the last one in verse 2a also talk about giving by what? Inaudibly. So when we give, it talks about don't blow the trumpet. It's about, which means don't make sound about it. Don't talk about it. Don't display it. Don't make a placard and say this is how much I give everybody to see don't go and talk about it to people. Don't go and imagine. But you, between God, you can't talk to God and say, 
God, I'm bringing this gift, this giving, this tithe, this special offering, this first fruit, whatever it is. Next week, I'm going to talk about the types of, uh, of giving that we, may, we, may, we should give. Other than tithe and offering, in offering, what kinds of offerings there are? There are tons of them. There's about 23 or more from just two, two books. And I want to share them with us for us to understand the types. So that sometimes when you are giving, other than tithe, you will come when you are bringing your gift to God. You can talk to God with it about it. Other than God, you don't say, God, I'm bringing my first fruit. Only God knows that it's first fruit. Obviously, on, you indicate on there whether it's tithe or offering, if it's offering for, the, for them to allocate for accounting. But other than that, it's not, it's not on my business. I, as a pastor, shouldn't know what, what you give. I, you don't need to tell me. You don't need to, I don't need to look into the books. It's some people that are taking care of the books that tell it for accounting purposes. And we just need to use the money wisely to, and, and, and judiciously to run the ministry and to do outreaches as God enables us. Amen. I want you to begin to pray. First of all, I want you to pray that you will be an investor in the kingdom. Amen. And I believe that as we do this, God is going to open your eyes to see natural investment that will make you great money. Because it's a hap- it has happened in my life several times. And I believe so, that it shall happen to you as we faithfully obey God. Amen? It, 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 because when you are investing, God begins to teach you certain things and open your eyes to see certain things that they are around us right now, but we don't see it. Jesus said we have eyes, but we can't see. We have ears, but we can't hear. But when we give invisibly and we give inaudibly, and God will then open your visible, uh, physical eyes to see investment. He will open your, uh, uh, your physical ears to be hearing his voice or hearing certain things that will direct you to places or things you must do because God wants you to flourish your life. Amen? And then that's where they become, it begin to become transitory. I want you to pray that you'll be, talk to the Lord, that, Lord, I want to be a kingdom investor. I want to be an invest in your kingdom. Teach me how to be invest in your kingdom. Show me how to be invest in your kingdom. And I know as you are showing me this, I'm going to see in the natural, physically manifest ways to invest in the, in, in the, in the earth. Because God wants us to be blessed uh, in heavenly and blessed earth, earthly him as well. Begin to pray, church, in the name of Jesus. I want you to talk to him. This is the, a business between you and God with what you have heard. If, if, if you don't understand it, make mental notes and make physical notes. And you can ask me these questions on Tuesday. But I want you to pray that, Lord, use me. I want to be an investor in the kingdom. Other than investing my talent, investing my life, and to be a minister of the gospel, to be a, a witness, and to be a person who carries a character to be able to, to be a, make a difference in the world, I want to also invest money into your kingdom. I want to be a, an investor in your kingdom to release seed, to release grain, to release, to direct, oh God, grain into your kingdom. Direct, I mean, money into your house, of, in the house. Seed food into the house that your house will not lack. And I want, oh God, to be an investor that learn how to direct money into the church, let loose money into the church, give unto the church, and the seed, uh, give grain, give seed, uh, so that this seed will be moved the church forward. This seed will move the, will bring refreshment to the church. Will bring refreshing to the church uh, as we are praying for times of refreshment by revival. That Lord, as I'm giving, that my life will be revived, my family will be, my economic well-being, my investment in the natural will be revived. Uh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want us to pray. I've, Lord, as I've given, I want my life to move forward. Amen? I want everything I do to move forward. My, if it's education, I will move forward. If it's an investment in business, I will move forward. Anything that I touch, according to the word of God, that whatsoever your hand shall touch shall be blessed. I pray that you will move forward in the name of Jesus. As God makes you an investor in his kingdom, that your life shall move forward, your business shall move forward, your career shall move forward, your life and your family, your children shall move forward, your education and acquisition of knowledge, acquisition of skill shall cause you to move forward. 
Favor will come upon you as you release and, and, and cast your bread upon the waters. That God, the same water will move you forward. The same water will carry you forward. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. As the word say, and that shall find in many days. I want you to pray that Lord multiply everything that I, I do. Amen. Let there be multiplication in my life. Let my finances multiply. Let see this is a, 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 a faith. You may have one cent, but it shall multiply. You may have one thousand, it shall multiply. You may have ten thousand, it shall multiply. You may have hundred thousand, it shall multiply. It shall not be stagnant. Amen. Pray that your life, everything you God has given you, your life shall bring multiplication, abundance, and greatness shall come upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Abundance, multiplication, and greatness. Abundance, multiplication, and greatness. Numerous. You will be moving forward in, a, in, a, in, a, in many ways. That your life shall prosper in many ways. That your life shall be great. Everything you do shall tend to be great. God will turn your life to be great. Will turn your activities to be great. Everything you do, that Lord, the Spirit of the Lord... Because the church is not stagnant. The church is a place of refreshment. Your, my finances shall be refreshed. The church is a transitory place. Your life shall become transitory. Your money shall become transitory. Your business shall become transitory. The spirit of the Lord shall move upon the surface of your, your resources and cause life to come upon it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let your living walk Lord, over my soul, let your living spirit come and take control. Every situation that has troubled my mind, all our cares and Unto you, I rule. Let your living water. Let your living water flow by soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control. Every situation that has troubled our mind, all our cares and burdens unto you, I rule. Call on Jesus. tithes and offering, I want us to take a moment. I want us to pray concerning the hearts that I share with you. That remove every ungodly heart from my head. Remove every ungodly heart from the church. Remove every fake heart. 
Santa Claus is has taken over the name of Jesus and corrupt the Christian uh, Christianity, the life of Christ, and deceptive, perverted that every ungodly heart that is put up for me, I command it removed. Every ungodly heart, every human-made heart, every hedonistic heart, every paganistic heart, every human heart, every demonic heart, uh, remove it from our heart. Remove it from the restored house. Remove it from our head in the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabbi Makan. Oh, that are perverted. Ye spirit that are perverted. The truth of who Christ is. The truth of who God is. The truth of who generous, the generous God, the generous Father. They have Santa Claus have replaced God in the eyes of people. So Jesus, he has replaced Jesus in the eyes of children, in the eyes of society. This uh, human engineered heart that we command it out of our lives. We command it out of the church. We command it out of the restored house chapel. From all leadership, all congregation members, all our children, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now I want us to pray. Everything we command out and take out, we have to replace it with the right thing. I want us to praise the Lord. Put your crown upon my heart. Crown the church with, your, with, with Christ. Crown us with anointing. Crown us with your glory. Crown us with the heart, the heavenly heart, so that we can be people that walk in truth, in righteousness, and in and, and, and orderliness. Amen? Because when there is a, a ungodly heart put upon us, we will walk ungodly. We will talk ungodly. We will live ungodly. But we want the crown of heaven to be placed upon the, uh, your head. That there is a crown that as we live on this earth here. I'm not talking about the crown of reward when we go to heaven. But I'm talking about there is a heavenly heart, a heavenly garment, headgear that God wants to put on you. It's the halo. It's the light. The light of God. The halo around your head. Pray that God crown my head. With, the, with the, your halo, with the, with, the, with the light of God. Crown my head. Cover my head with the, with the light of God. Let it be upon my forehead. Let it be upon my, the, 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 the crown of my head. I begin to pray, church. That, Lord, let your light be upon my head. That fake hearts will not be put on me. That fake mind, to protect my mind from fake news, uh, fake decisions, fake agendas, or oh men, fake uh, uh, things that people will concoct, in, whether it's organizations, if including even sometimes so called men and women of God, that they will bring ideologies that will place in our mind that are ungodly, that causes us to walk away with. Pray that the light of God shall be above your head. The light, the shining light of God, the glory of God will be upon your forehead, will be upon the crown of your head. Let the light of God be on the crown of your head in the name of Jesus. Above all, let no fake thing be upon our head in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. The second one I want us to pray. I want you to pray that, Lord, in the name of Jesus, everything that is placed around my home, in terms of cobwebs in my life, cobwebs that have surrounded my life, surrounded my family, surrounded my church, that Lord remove them by the fire of the Holy Ghost. With the wind of God, blow, blow the wind of God. Cancel the, and, and, and sweep away, sweep away, sweep away every, uh, sweep away everything, sweep away everything, sweep away everything. Sweep away everything. Every cobweb in the restored house be swept away by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Burn and, and drive them out in the mighty name of Jesus. Every cobweb that is placed upon the restored house, every cobweb that is placed upon my home, every cobweb that is placed upon the, upon the city of Surrey, every cobweb that is hindering the church from moving forward, pray that it be blown away by the wind of God. Blow away with the wind of God. Blow away by the wind of God. Blow away by the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want us to pray. I want us to pray that Lord put your heavenly protective net about us. That no ungodly uh, thing shall penetrate to get close to us. 
in the name of Jesus. Remember the heart is dealing with the head. Cobwebs are also placed over us to hold us, to hinder us, to call us. Pray that the fire of the Lord shall surround you above, beneath, and around you in the name of the, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Pray and ask that the fire of the Holy Ghost shall be around us to cover us. The net of the heavenly net, the kingdom net, shall surround us and no weapon of net, of evil net, no cobweb, no demonic web, no satanic web, no evil spirits that are designed as, 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 as the spider, the spider spirit to be commanded out and we place the godly protection, the godly protection, the godly cover, the heavenly cover upon our lives in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And lastly, we want to pray that Lord remove every gag that is upon my mouth, upon my jaws, upon my lips, upon my tongue. Anything that is stopping, Satan has released to stop, gag me and put that fear so that I can speak and be a witness of Christ. I can be a witness of the kingdom. I can be a true Christian. I can be a speak boldly what I believe, what I stand. I can share my testimony. Take that gag be taken off. Pray that it be removed from the church. It be removed from your life. It be removed from your family. In the name of Jesus. Every spiritual gag that has placed over your mouth, we command it removed. Every spiritual gag that is we, we, we put over your jaws, we remove it in the name of Jesus. Every spiritual uh, 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 gag that is placed over your tongue to limit you from speaking, to control you from not speaking, the word of God, we command it broken, shattered by the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost, demolish, demolish, release in the name of Jesus. Every gag, whether it's of man or of the devil, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I want us to pray and that Remember the disciples and the apostles after Jesus died and resurrected and they started persecuting the church. They started preaching the word. They arrested them. They took them to, to, uh, to the magistrates. In those days, it was the church and the, the Pharisees and Sadducees were acting as judges and they, they, they literally whipped them. They literally whipped them and they say, don't preach in this name. They were trying to put a gag on them. And they say, may God be a witness whether we should believe you and we should all believe, believe our God. As for us, we will speak the word of God. Amen? So they refused to be God. Even they were literally whipped. And you and I, today, they don't physically whip us, but there are different ways they used to want to stop us. I want you to pray that God, Holy Spirit, come upon me to give me the boldness and the courage to stand. Amen? And to not stop talking about Jesus. To not stop sharing my testimony. To not stop talking about... And when you prompt me, I will speak. Whether it's in public or in private. Whether it's in... Wherever it is. Let, pray that the Holy Spirit use me to speak. Even when I'm in the marketplace. In the stores. In the, in the trains. Scouting in the bars. Wherever I am. When you prompt me to speak about Christ. I will not be afraid. I will speak. In the name of Jesus, pray that the Spirit of the Lord will come upon us to come give us the courage like the apostles, the boldness to declare the word of God. Whose report shall we believe? Is it Christ or the government? Is it Christ or the people? Is it the pressure of the people of the world? Is it the people of the world that dictate to us what we must say and what we shouldn't say? Pray that you shall speak boldly, courageously, the word of God in this dangerous days, in this wicked days, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, uh, I'll pray. It's time for a Titan offering. And as you are learning about giving, the reason you must give, the right way to give, and the reward, knowing that there is a reward, and in the reward there is an investment. When I want you to pray that your giving will be an investment, not just throwing money away, not just giving without, you don't, as if you don't know what to do with the money. You know what to do with the money, but you are investing it into the house of God so that the many days 
you shall find it, which means you shall get it back. You shall gain it back. You shall possess it. Not only the way you gave, but abundantly and in numerous ways. In, public, in, 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 in abundance. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. your tithes and your offerings. Um, if you're giving electronically, we have the Interact. If you're giving through Interact, the email is on the screen. Um, or if you're giving through the website, you can just go to the RestoreHouseChapel.com and give through there. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name